People are freaking out right now. Like they're tired of having their constitutional rights taken away with a mandatory stay at home orders. Cities are suing the California governors so their people can go back onto their beaches again. Idiots. Like I'll stay at home for the rest of my life if they tell me to. Who knows how to make the best choices for my health and my life? Definitely not me. So I'm more than happy to put my blind trust in power hungry politicians and definitely uncorrupt groups like the World Health Organization. I think they know what's best for me because like they know me better than I know me. The last thing you want is people to have the freedom to make their own choices and then experience the consequences of their choices. I think free will is a little bit of a sin. I don't think we should have it in the first place. Like you wouldn't give a razor blade to a three-year-old because it wouldn't be in their best interest. So you shouldn't give freedom to people either. All these Americans that want their freedoms are just ungrateful. I say if you don't like how things are going and you just want your freedom, then why don't you move to a free country like North Korea or Venezuela, you freaking heathens. Oh, I 100% buy into the narrative they tell me. I think it's ludicrous some people don't 100% believe the narrative like it's the absolute truth. Why wouldn't you? Think about it. If you were in charge of a giant powerful business that pretends it's a charity like the World Health Organization, you wouldn't spend your time carefully crafting your message to manufacture consent with the public to get them to go along with your mysterious agenda that's in your best interest that you tell them is in their best interest. You'd probably just get up to the podium and have a spontaneous conversation and see what comes out of your mouth while you're riffing. I think that's what they're doing. That's why when Trump gets up there and talks about things like injecting Lysol, it seems so out of the ordinary because he spends months carefully crafting his message. I also find the more scared I am, the more unwilling I am to believe anything other than the original narrative that they told me that they're still telling me, even when new, more accurate information emerges. Like when USC did research in LA County a few weeks ago and showed the amount of people infected with COVID-19 is 28 to 55 times more than we originally thought. Yep, because most of these people don't have symptoms, it suggests the infection is far less dangerous than we originally thought. And in contrast to the original guesstimation of a death rate of 4.5% in COVID cases, the LA County Health Department says the new research suggests the actual death rate in COVID cases is between 0.1 and 0.2%. That means the actual death rate in COVID-19 cases is 22 and a half to 45 times less deadly than we were originally told. But this new scientific data is irrelevant to me because it's like I already made up my mind when I was the most frightened and I'm gonna keep believing what makes me the most frightened because it just feels more congruent in my being that way. I'll also spend a lot of time looking for information that they shove in my face that confirms my existing beliefs. There's nothing like a little confirmation bias to help my mind continue to learn and expand. I'm also really good at believing the COVID death count as anyone who is diagnosed with COVID-19 and then dies, irregardless of what they die from, pre-existing condition or otherwise, their death is labeled a COVID death. Makes sense to me. Instead of letting the doctor who is treating the patient use their medical education to determine the cause of death, I think the mandate to label it a COVID death is more accurate. And it helps the COVID death count get higher than it is. And the higher it is, the more scared I am. And the more scared I am, the more obedient I am. Yes, I would like a mandatory vaccine. I'm scared enough that I think more things should be mandatory. Sometimes the best medicine is like the best sex, non-consensual. They work on the same premise. But I'll tell you this, those vaccines better be brought to market without long-term human trials. And I think it will be. It's better that way because the long-term trials that prove a vaccine's safety and effectiveness are pretty arrogant. It's just like, hey, let's spend years rubbing it in your face how great this thing is. I say it's better to just be humble and forgo that bragging period. It's pretty well proven that being proactive and taking care of your health won't keep you healthy. Our only hope is in the pharmaceutical companies protecting us. 
they have a very good track record of never harming anyone. So I sleep pretty good at night. I'm also kind of asleep right now. And yes, I would like to be microchipped as long as they tell me it's for my own good. And I apologize if I'm being a little too greedy here, but I'd like two microchips, please. Just to keep me extra safe. Or maybe we should just do a baby step and use mandatory tracking apps on our phone first to keep us safe and then go to the microchips. I think that's probably the way to go. I'll tell you who I trust more than God, Bill Gates, because he's got more money than God. Money can't buy happiness, but it can definitely buy my trust. I accurately look at Bill Gates as a medical authority when it comes to vaccines and being undiseased because he's a software engineer, not a doctor. He doesn't have a medical degree or any other degree for that matter, which means he's not part of the corrupt medical system because he doesn't have any medical training, which means he knows more about medicine than medical professionals. Like when my child's sick, I don't take him to a doctor. I take him to the Apple store to have a computer engineer take a look at him. I'm not an idiot. Bill not only has my trust because he wears sweaters over collared shirts, but also because of how he found the path of altruism that he's on. Think about his journey. In 1999, he was sued by the federal government and found guilty of breaking antitrust laws because he created a monopoly with Microsoft, presumably because he's so power hungry for control and domination. Then the very next year in 2000, he founded the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which now controls the World Health Organization, which is spearheading the charge to narrate to us what's going on with the coronavirus and the race to find a vaccine to cure it. He miraculously switched from being such a power-hungry Microsoft overlord breaking laws to the extent that the US government had to sue him, to just one year later with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, being such a shining example of altruism that he selflessly cared so much that he made it his mission to rid the world of disease with vaccines. Sounds like he found Jesus to me. There's no other explanation. Oh, and get this, this one time a friend of mine who's obviously a conspiracy theorist who needs to be medicated, had this outrageous theory that after he was found guilty in 1999 of breaking antitrust laws, Bill Gates realized that Microsoft could no longer be the vehicle that he used to gain more power and control, so he founded the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation the next year to be the new vehicle for him to gain more power and control. And he even said Bill was smart enough to make the vehicle appear as though he's using it to help the world, even though he's just using it to take over more of the world, which would make the world help him take more of their power and control. So crazy. I was like, bro, he's not that smart. He's a billionaire, not a trillionaire. The mainstream narrative helps me classify anyone that doesn't go along with its narrative as an irresponsible lunatic conspiracy theorist. That way I can label them as crazy rather than thinking about what they're saying. So, my friend's a crazy lunatic. Thinking for yourself and making your own choices is dangerous during a time like this. Is that a blue pill? 